Doug. Lemons, how's it going? Can you hear me? Clemens? Oh, wait. Quiet. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Oh, good. Okay. I was having trouble with my uh, microphone earlier in the week. Yeah. Um, I have failed to upload the document, even though I... Um, um, I've been editing like wild, but I've been, I just missed the deadline. There's just too much going on. Okay. So you, I'll, uh, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, so I'm already on markdown with that subscription document. So I'm going to go and I'm going to upload this in like, probably not today, but tomorrow morning. And okay. make it part of it. Sounds good to me. Hey, yeah. Scott. Howdy. From quarantine. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry i hope you're good did they I'm actually good. yeah i'm good did no, they actually no tell you to stay home or did they just say it's, it's your choice uh no uh, well there better be a really good reason to come to the office or uh be within six feet of anybody interesting okay yeah my world hasn't changed, but it feels more like a bunker now. <laughs> Fewer cookies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, funny. Thanks. I went to the Sounders game. It's a big sporting event here. Well, soccer yeah. game. Uh, and then uh, the next game is is uh, canceled because we broke the rules by congregating in 30,000 people. <laughs> Oh jeez! Yeah, the the I went I went to a football game on Sunday. Uh, that that just that still happened. Then and, and we, yesterday we had our um, our big local uh, derby against Cologne, and uh, that was uh, without spectators, which was um, weird. So we all watched, but like I I had my stadium friends and watched on TV with them here and now the discussion is whether they're going to go and cancel the entire league hmm. italy already did and spain did and that is like italy and spain without football is i mean that's that's a real state of emergency for both <laughs> countries and you know italy has all the restaurants shut down and all the stores and everything it's quite grave yeah hey john hey tommy hey Good Wait a morning. minute. Was that Tommy? Did you actually speak? Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's, the, that's like a first. <laughs> I must have caught you off guard there for a minute. You, you weren't thinking straight, were you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. Okay. I'm sorry to pick on you, but it's just funny. Hey, Eric. Hello, Doug. You know, they're extending my son's uh, spring break vacation from college, and they're going to start doing classes online, um, which means he's at home now, which isn't, you know, a bad thing unto itself, other than he keeps really, really weird hours. And he's a boy, so he eats a lot. Um, so he's at like, he's up at like three or four in the morning in the kitchen cooking stuff. And it's and he's a boy, so he's loud. <laughs> so he, I'm getting very little sleep these days, and it's very annoying. I can't wait for this whole thing to be over. Hey, Ginger. Good morning, Doug. Morning. Hey, Mike. Good morning. Hey, Kathy. Welcome. It's been a while.
Oh, hi. Good morning. Sorry, I was on mute. No, not a problem. Morning, Jeff. Hey, good morning. Related to the previous topic, uh, I think Doug will like this. You know, a company's been doing offsites, but because of budgeting reasons, uh, offsites have now usually been on site, but they're still called offsite because it's like you maybe you travel to a different office. Mm -hmm. And then uh, those got canceled and they're going to be virtual. So now they are virtual offsites where <laughs> it was going to be on site, but now it's virtual, but it's still called an offsite, virtual offsite. It's just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and even if they would have had an onsite, it still would have turned into a virtual meeting. So it's just another meeting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that's hilarious. <laughs> it's a uh, be on the conference call all day. <laughs> Oh, man. All right, let's see who we have on now. Uh, Klaus, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hello, and Nacho. Whoa, good God, hold on a minute. My screen's getting all weird. Yes. Uh, yeah, Nacho, if I can Nacho. spell it right. I'm, so I apologize. <laughs> uh, Vinay, are you there? Yes, I'm here. And Mr. Grant. Sorry, first time unmuting. Okay, yes. I mean. All right, cool. All right. We usually wait till three after you guys are in new, so give it a minute or two. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Grant. James, are you there? I am here. Hey, this isn't your first call, is it? Yeah, it's the first one I made of this one. I actually um, signed up for the wrong call initially, so I only figured that out last week. Okay. Um, do me a favor. Let me paste the link to the minutes. <clears throat> if you can just put your company name. There, there's a link to the minutes in yeah, the chat. I'm not, I want to be clear. I'm not officially representing my company. I'm here more, as we talked about around the book, but... Um, Okay, in that case, I'll just say yourself. That's fine. That's fine. Thank you. Okay, cool. All right, it is three after. See if I miss anybody, then we'll get started. I think I got everybody. Okay, let's go and jump into it. Um, okay, community time. Anything from the community people want to bring up that's not on the agenda? Okay, I'm not hearing any. SDK, um, Scott or Clemens or anybody else who made the call last week, was there anything worthy of bringing up? Okay, not hearing anything. So, that was in the middle oh. of getting refactored to V2. We're not quite done yet. Okay. Yeah, I think one, one of the things we discussed was also like how long were we wanna keep all the, the old versions around. Um, oh, yeah, we're going to do a special provision for 03 for new SDKs. Yeah, so that's that's the uh, so basically 03 is being the one that we still support and then tossing it, tossing the other ones. Yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit later. This PR down here, we talk about that a little, and I did update that based upon our discussions, so we can talk about that again down there. Okay, any questions for the SDK team? Okay, Kathy, since you're on, is there anything you'd like to update the group on relative to the workflow stuff? Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, no, not really. I, sorry, I haven't really got much time to work on that. Um, so, no. Okay, 
That's fine. Just give me the opportunity. Thank you. Uh, Doug, if I jump back up to the SDK, I put a link in for the SDK subgroup next week. I have I have an Elixir SDK in the works that I would like folks to take a look at. Cool. Um, wait a minute. Do, do, do. Actually, I'll do it later. Yeah, I'll add a link to that information into here just people, it draws people's attention to uh, it. I can, I can drop it in. Oh, cool. That'd be even better. Thank you. All right. In that case, let's go ahead and jump into the delivery stuff. So, I'll tell you what, it's Clemens, since I think yours actually might be shorter, let's have you go first and then we'll jump over to Mike's uh, PR. So, we, so, what we did is, uh, yeah, my story is shorter. Um, <laughs> um, so what we did this week is we actually didn't work on this document at all, um, but we broke out into a, so I took this um, at, the, at the, at the, basically after our, our previous call, I took the text that's here and put that into a Word doc um, as an interim step um, to preserve the, the formatting. And then um, I, meanwhile, I have this down in Markdown, but um, I've done some cleanup on terminology and uh, I'm turn, turned this more into spec language, but I have not been, and I've been editing like crazy, but with everything that's going on, um, uh, I've just not been able to get to, to complete the homework. So I'm sorry. Um, and I will, I aim to upload that um, uh, markdown document uh, as a PR um, tomorrow. Um, I think one of the things, so one of the, the key things we did in terms of um, clarifications is since pull and push were um, contested um, and you know, with some, and, I, and I'm buying some of the arguments, uh, I'm, trying, I'm trying to distinguish between effectively who's initiating the, the, the communication, whether the delivery and, and really and like, what is the delivery model? Um, so you'll see a term subscriptions with customer with sorry not, with consumer solicited delivery, and subscriptions with su subscription manager initiated delivery. Um, those are effectively the differences between pull and push to clarify what I mean there. Um, and uh, and otherwise, where the spec will go as far as to define um, effectively what the API looks like, the subscription manager API looks like in the abstract, um, but will um, not yet have the, uh, be down to the HTTP level definitions likely, but it will contain what we discussed in previous calls, like the filter, the f simple filter syntax, um, uh, et cetera. But again, so that's, that's as much as I have um, go and take a look at the at the PRs sometime tomorrow, and you'll find a link to the document. Sounds good. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Any questions or comments for Clemens? All right. Not hearing any. Let me bring up Mike's PR so you can talk to that. I, I, I apologize in advance for not having much to say. I have not had a chance to work through all of the comments yet. It has been a crazy week. <laughs> Short and sweet. Okay. Yeah. Um, any Sorry. questions for Wait. Mike? For those okay. of you who don't know, Seattle is in a panic right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. Yeah. <clears throat> any questions or comments? Okay. So just out of curiosity, um, and this question actually isn't actually just for you, Mike. It's actually for anybody, but just using your PR as a, as a sort of a guinea pig here. At what point do you guys feel like uh, we should just merge this PR? Obviously, most all the comments are addressed, but is there any like minimum bar you guys have in mind in terms of when we can actually merge the PR? Or is it pretty much as all the initial comments are addressed, you can just merge it and at that point, we'll just do PRs against it because it does like any of the doc in the repo. Do you guys have any opinion on that in terms, just from a process perspective? I just wanna make sure we're not missing some step here that people think we needed to go through before we actually merge it. I think of this as the input spec, and then we start refining it. So, I mean, we need to land it at some point, and I think we need to get, to be able to comment effectively, we need to have a, a base document in the repo. So, I don't think we need to, we can review on there, and it's a draft, and I mean, it's the same process as, as iterating over, the, over our base spec. I, that's, that's the way I look at it. 
Yeah, the, the way, no, I, I definitely, I, I think I tend to agree. The only reason I ask the question is um, sometimes it's easier to, to work uh, outside the PR process if you have large scale changes you want to make, which is why we started, you know, with a Google Doc to begin with and stuff like that. I just didn't want to preemptively merge this thing if somebody thought from a process perspective we should hold off a little. But I'm not hearing anybody really jump up and objecting. Yeah, it's fairly hard to collaborate if it's not merged. Okay. Like I think I think if the if the ori if the original group of of people who were in the sub working groups are saying this is this is ready, then it should go in. Okay. That's kind of the consensus I'm trying to get for our group is that everybody nods to the, the this is what this is our result, and then we're going to go and merge it. So the the document I'm going to give give you all on tomorrow is uh, it's not that yet. I'm still going to go and collect feedback um, from the group, but then um, I think we're ready to go at that point then. Okay. Anybody else have any comments on that? All right. And yeah, then I think I think on this one, I'll I'll make sure to note at the top that this is a working draft of the document. Ooh, so good point. Don't, yeah. Yeah. Actually, um, you may want to. I think in the past we used to say like. Um, it already says that. Well. Status of this document. This oh yeah. I was I was actually wondering about a period oh, yeah, that we just said our, yeah we, we, whether it was this just said like version zero point one dash RC or something like that because I think that's that's the pattern we used to use for because it's not technically a zero one yet right yeah it's like a pre zero one I can put yeah. RC a one yeah that's yeah. like yeah I might put something in there like that okay other than other than that it looks good any other questions or comments okay easy enough. And thank you, Mike, for the uh, link to the SDK. Um, but moving forward, okay, here we go. So I can't remember for sure, other than I'm pretty sure Clemens, you said you were gonna take a look at this PR to make sure there wasn't anything funky in here. Did you get a chance to do that or did anybody else look at it? Have any comments? Um, I think I, yes, I think I promised, but I didn't. Okay, well, I'll give you guys, and in particular Clemens, a chance to just, just to double check. And just to refresh people's memory, the must here and the must here are technically breaking changes, but the assumption from last week's call was that we assume that that's what we meant to do. It's just more of a, of a syntactical thing at this point, because that was always the intention for these requirements to be there. Yes, I, I, yeah, I remember now. Um, yeah, I think this is okay. I, and I think that's where we are, where we were. Yes, uh, also last time. Yes, I just want to give people a chance to look it over. Okay. Any other questions or comments on this one? Any objections to approving? All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Okay. This one. Um, well, this one is not ready to merge because if we like it, if you like the general direction, I need to make the similar changes to the other uh, transport bindings. Hold on a sec. Let me hide the comments. So just to refresh people's memory, um, there was a little bit of, uh, uh, there, there was lack of clarity in our specification in, in terms of knowing whether a binary message is a cloud event or not. Um, for structured, it's obviously very easy. You can look at the content type, but for binary, it wasn't clear. So this text in here basically says, if all the required attributes, and I believe there's four of them, appear as HTTP headers, then you can kind of assume it's a cloud event. Now, based upon uh, Slinka developer's comments, um, he had me change the wording slightly to make it clear in terms of what that means to, to think it's a cloud event. You know, does that mean it is a cloud event or you can just start parsing it, hoping it's a cloud event or whatever. And so what I did is I modified the text here. Where is it? Um, where is it? Uh, oh yeah, that's up here. Um, if if yeah, I talk about it be, about whether the message ought to be attempted to be parsed as a cloud event, and then down here I talk about how um, you know if, if all the four attributes are there, then you can start that process. However. Just because those four attributes are there does not mean it's, it's technically a valid cloud event. It still has to adhere to all the normative language in the specification. So for example, there are musts in there relative to values and stuff like that. If they don't meet those musts, even if they are, even if they do have the attributes, it's still not a valid cloud event. I don't go into what the implementation does if it's invalid, that's completely up to it because we stay out of the processing model. But I think this at least clarifies whether someone should at least attempt to parse it by, by the presence or absence of those four attributes. 
I have a question here. Uh, mm -hmm. So we are referring to the attributes in the HTTP headers to increase the probability that we determine. I, uh, the, the problem that I'm struggling with, and, and please help me if I'm uh, mistaken, is uh, it still doesn't give us confidence that it could be a cloud event. So what is, is it actually helping? Uh, is it uh, clarify anything or is, it, uh, or is it just confusing it a little bit more? I mean, does that make sense? It's, we're saying then it's probably a cloud event. Uh, why are we not able to unambiguously determine that if those attributes do exist, that it is a cloud event? Right. I think th in my mind, there are two reasons why we can't say for sure. One is um, our specification cannot mandate that people do not use our attributes randomly. Right. So someone could say, hey, those look kind of like interesting attributes and I'm going to stick them in my message. But they don't actually know about our specification. Right. And uh -huh. so the presence of those attributes technically doesn't mean anything because they don't adhere to the full blown spec. So we can't force people not to use their attributes. So their presence in a message does not guarantee anything. It's, it's, just a, it's just a hint that it may actually be a cloud event. Now, even if, they, even if the person meant for it to be a cloud event, if they messed up and didn't adhere to the rest of the specification, according to the spec, because they didn't you know, adhere to all the musts and stuff like that, um, if, it's, if it doesn't adhere to those, it is not a valid cloud event. And all we're trying to say here is we can't be definitive one way or the other, but we're trying to provide some guidance on what people should look for to try to see whether it actually meets the criteria, right? So for example, if it doesn't have those attributes in there, then they shouldn't even bother trying to parse it as a cloud event because it's not gonna pass. Correct, correct. So it's, it's just a, it's a more of a filtering mechanism. Yeah, kind of. And that's why if you look at it, technically there's no normative language in here, right? This is just sort of abstract guidance. And I, right. in, in a lot of ways, I actually thought about putting this into the primer but I thought it, this might be important enough that it should go into the spec because I mean, I've gotten more than one, I, people have asked me this question more than once. Thanks, Dan. Mm -hmm. sure. uh, I... Any other questions or comments? Does this seem like the right direction to go? And if so, I can make the changes to the other specs as appropriate or the other transport specs as appropriate. Okay, not hearing any objection. I'll, I'll make the changes to the other specs and then we can maybe review it and approve it next week. Okay, thank you everybody. Um, okay, this one, technically it's an SDK thing, but I wanted to give everybody else a chance to review it. Now on last week's call, um, we were talking about uh, what are the requirements for, or what. These aren't hard requirements, right? These are pretty much just suggestions, but we're trying to talk about what are the requirements for SDK authors. And last time we talked about everybody obviously should support the latest and N and minus one of the major releases. Within a major release, they only need to support the latest version, in other words, the latest minor version. However, we do have sort of the bootstrap problem of what do you do when the latest version is 1.0? What is the N minus one at that point? So according to, or <clears throat> per the agreement we talked about last week, I added a note here that says 1.0 is a special case. And in those cases, people should support 0 0.3. So Scott and Clemens, is that, is that consistent with what I think we agreed to last week? Uh, That's my yeah. understanding, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, any questions or comments on this? Oh, yes, John. That's a, that's a should and not a must, right? Um, this isn't, but well, technically it's not a normative spec, so yeah, yes. <laughs> Either way, yes. <laughs> okay. That's right. That's, I was going to point out the same thing. I'm oh, sorry, John, I couldn't hear you. Say, can you say that again? I was actually going to point out the same thing. Oh. Right? People okay. starting a new SDK right now is problematic, right? Because they're going to go backwards to support O3. So, yeah, it should just be should, not a must. Yes. Yep. And I, I think I have a big recollection that we did talk a little bit about that last week as well. Um, but I'll just keep in mind, this isn't an order to spec. That's why it's lowercase should and get instead of capital should. But these are all just um, suggestions. So, Okay. Any objection to approving that? All right, thank you. 
All right, so, <clears throat> so I put this on the list, even though Clemens raised an issue with it today. So some Googlers are working on, <clears throat> excuse me, PubSub binding for, um, for their offering. And, um, and Clemens, you pointed out, hold on, where is it? Where did you say that, Clemens? Somewhere in there. Yeah, I know, I saw it. Was uh, it? There, you just had it. Uh, oh, 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 oh. It's painful. What Clemens said. There we go. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you want to raise the issue here? I don't think there's any objection, but just so people understand why things may change radically. We, we qualifying protocols and encodings is uh, the section that we wrote together about what is acceptable to get an official binding and what is it, what is not Google Cloud, Google Cloud PubSub is a proprietary product. And therefore we have a document uh, that is the product proprietary products link uh, document that uh, takes links. So this spec um, should be hosted in a Google repository and then be pointed to per the rules. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you, Clemens, for pointing that out. It was my bad. I, I didn't know about the rule. Uh, I'm trying to move this to a repo and then add the link here. Uh, yeah. But actually, I'm glad that I made the mistake because I, I had some really good comments from Christoph then uh, that will probably address and then add the link as well. I, I think it's. I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm totally not against having that. It's. It's great that we have you know as much coverage as as, as possible. It's uh, just that we have. I just want to point out that rule, and you know, nothing bad has happened. It's all good. Yes, uh, I, I, but uh, yeah, uh, you guys are right. I, I didn't know about the rule and we'll move it out. Yes. Oh, great. Thank you. Yeah. So expect, a, a, I think, a fairly radical change to the PR. <laughs> um, but obviously, if you guys want to review it and provide feedback, obviously, Nacho, as Nacho said, you know, more feedback is, appears to be welcome. So get it in there quickly before the tech stack disappears. All right. And, and one question there that, yeah. uh, regarding timelines. So when we add this, uh, this might be approved next week. We need to wait for a week until the next uh, working group meeting for this like uh, link to get approved. Uh, technically, yes. Um, technically, we only approve PRs during the week unless they're you know typographical type things. Um, if you can get the change in there <clears throat> by Tuesday night, then people should be able to review it and approve it by Thursday. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And Jim, your hand was up there for a second. Did you want to say something? Um, I retracted. I, I retracted my thought. I mean, I, I was going to say, given what's going on with this proposal here, I, is there anything we can do or say around, you know, if you're looking to create a transport binding, but it is a proprietary thing that, you know, feel free to run it by us before you just sort of, throw it out there in the world i mean if if the intention here is that this pr would turn into essentially just a link to another spec um is there any sort of onus on us to make sure that whatever that link is pointing at actually works that, that's to... really what i was driving at yeah there was never a uh... Right, like the, the, the link to third party was best intention. So right. if the spec is correct according to that vendor, then that's that's fine. That's yeah, possible. I mean, that, that was my thought. I mean, I, yeah, I just wanted to raise it, but yeah. Okay. I thought, that was why I lowered my hand again. <laughs> didn't we either talk about or put text someplace that, that said it's within our right to remove things if we think they're pointing to old or bad information, something like that? Um, yeah, I think we had a provision to delete links, but yeah. not really the spec that's linked. Yeah. But I think, I think, Jim, you raised an interesting question, which is, you know, how does somebody just ask for our review, even though it's not necessary, you know? Um, I'm trying to think, I, I think the most obvious thing is maybe have, they can raise an issue just to draw, draw our attention to it. Um, and then once they get, you know, a couple of reviews, they can close the issue. But I'm wondering more about whether we should add some text someplace in either this doc right here to explain that they, that people have that option to open an issue to draw our attention to it or to join our weekly call to draw our attention to it or something like that. Do you think that would be helpful, Jim? 
I, I think there needs to be something front and center somewhere that says, you know, if you're doing a proprietary binding that this is what, you know, this is what it should do. You know, look at these, you know, take them as uh, a template and then, you know, open a PR on the page we're looking at to cross-reference stuff. Yeah, because I think that's where your maybe SDK people are going to get interested as other bindings start showing up. Um, so, yeah, I don't quite sure where you put it. That that's that's what I'm struggling with. In the interest or uh, in the theme of uh, no good deed goes unpunished, would you like to take a first pass at a PR to add some text to that effect? Uh, yes, I think so. <laughs> I'll teach you to speak up. I appreciate that. Thank you, Jim. And I need I'll be dropping off in a minute, so you won't get any more bizarre questions. <laughs> No, it was a good one. I like it because more guidance we can provide would be uh, would be good. So, uh, <clears throat> okay, cool. All right, next on the list, and Slinky Developer has joined us. So we have this issue that he opened, and then you made a comment down here. Would you like to talk about what you're proposing that we do with this issue? Yeah, so the fix that uh, the, the paragraph about key, it just points to that partition key, uh, sorry, to the partition, uh, what's the name, partitioning extension, which honestly is just confusing because key is a really well-defined concept in, uh, uh, in the Kafka message specification. So just saying uh, the key extension must map to the Kafka message key, it's, it's far more clear than saying that there is a partition key extractor that extract things and then put inside a key, but then you open the partition extension and it's called the partition key, key extension. So it's, I, I think it would be better to just remove the link to the partitioning extension and say, uh, hey, when you create a cloud event that goes uh, uh, on the Kafka wire, uh, then you put, need to put the Kafka and uh, need to put the key, uh, the message as, a, as an extension, as an extension named key. To me, it sounds far more clear this way than going through the partitioning extension and the partition key extractor. Jim, did you want to say something? I, I was, I must be, I haven't read the full text here. Um, so I, I'm not, entirely sure what the problem is um the, the, the partitioning the partitioning of cloud events is agnostic to transports yeah so I, I, but i think when that extension was added it was there to enable a kafka transport binding to take advantage of it if it was present yeah um so i i'm not quite sure why why we'd want to remove that um that linkage because i should be able to produce a cloud event and to define a potential partitioning key irrespective of the transport it goes over um, and in fact it may go over transports that don't do partitioning yeah so but we wanted that to be retained across multiple transports so that's where it gets interesting yeah if you publish an event onto Kafka and it goes through an intermediary and gets moved to a different transport um, or vice versa that you need that partitioning concept at, at a cloud event level. We, yeah. might, we, might, we might actually have a conceptual that there might be some um, you know, miswording here in the, in the Kafka binding because the, the, um, the partition, and that might le lead to that confusion. The partition key or partition ID doesn't actually show up in the in the message per se, but it's it's the partition that you talk to in uh, in Kafka. So, um, and and you're talking to the partition directly. So that's a connection property ultimately, and and we're we're pulling that. So this function here. Is effectively pulling that information out of the message, and then and then making that something that is related to the connection. 
So it's not a it's not a um, it's not a key per se, but it's really how does how for Kafka how can you tell which partition to set to, and that is by looking at the partitioning extension by default, but it could also be any any other key. That's what that that's what the mechanism is meant to do. I, I am a little confused by that because I, I would expect that the partition key would be uh, have the Kafka partition selection algorithm applied to it in order to uh, select the partition, especially since uh, partitions can move around and such. So um, maybe you can help me get unconfused. Um. And, and I think, th and I think that's what my comment does in the end. I mean, that that's 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 what I say in this issue. That when you say partition key to a to a Kafka user, it's the key of the message or is the partition ID? I mean, it's it's not it's not really clear from from the very beginning. And yeah. and also there is the typo that in, in the spec is it says it says it states key while in the partitioning extension it says partitioning key. So. Yeah, I think I agree that that's confusing. I, I don't have a solution for it. It's just that 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 is confusing because because the 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 way we discussed this, we probably didn't 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 follow through in updating this correctly. Is um, that this key extractor the the key extractor idea? basically just stems from um, having to effectively assign a message to a partition. Um, and that there is a function that does that job and that depending on what that transport is and, and Kafka being a, there might be a hash function that you use for this or that you, that you may want to go and specify um, the, the partition directly and so that that effectively the, the partition is the partition is something that's a, a kind of a flexible assignment, um, and that the partition itself cannot be manifested in the typically isn't manifested in the event per se. That's the 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 thing we tried to we tried to kind of decouple those things. We we what we didn't want to do is is basically write the partition ID uh, directly into the um, uh, into the event, also because um, if you um, forward the event into um, a downstream um, Kafka broker, so you have effectively you, you use mirror, let's format if for instance you use Mirror Maker and you go from a four partition to a sixteen partition to a to a four partition um, broker. If you use a key function, if you use a key, then the the partitions will distribute differently, and if you use if you use a stable partition number, then if you go from the four partition to a six partition Kafka Kafka install, you would basically just go and send you know from four partitions to four partitions, and uh, you would have twelve partitions that are idle. So the idea was here to have a um, a way to dynamically in the client determine from the partition key what the partition number would be. And of course, the key attribute here is kind of shooting that in the um, it, it's probably it's not the proper resolution in the uh, in the uh, Kafka spec based on the discussion that we've we've been having. So I think that's what where some of the 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 um, the uh, confusion comes from. And I would think that we've we've had some of those discussions in the in the PRs. So we probably have to go and dig back into the history and, and find that. So I had a comment about this. Um, is, is the problem the implementation of that function that populates that attribute or is it the naming of the attribute? And I think it sounds like that should be, those should be separated, right? So depending on if it's Kafka uh, downstream, then the, you know, the appropriate partition key function is factored, which has knowledge on the number of brokers and how the best implementation versus the overloading of, I mean, the attribute is key and how it gets populated are two separate things. Is that a fair comment? 
yes, yeah, so yes, it is. Um, I think I think we've been we've been a little lazy and hand wavy on this point, <laughs> um, where we. Um, uh, we basically left we basically left this um, uh, with this function, and we, then I think we th we thought we had that solved. The function the function ultimately in this transport binding takes by default this partition key. That's what this this extract key extractor function is, and it goes and determines what the what the partition ID only shows up in your usage of the Kafka API, or if you want to go for a little bit further down in the Kafka protocol, but doesn't materialize in the message per se. The key here, the key attribute, um, I think that's a, that's a leftover that, that we didn't drop as we were having that discussion, or we didn't clarify that here. So the, 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 the key, yeah, so ultimately, let me, let me back out once. The idea is you should be able to specify some criterion in the message that will then go and determine what your partition number is without that key or the partition ID having to manif be manifested in the message per se because the, the mapping of the, of the message to a partition may be different as you're routing that event through multiple kinds of kinds of infrastructures that are partitioned. Correct. So Thanks, partition, uh, right? Yeah, actually, can I just uh, maybe suggest that we take a concrete example, like, uh, uh, and then say, what was the key being? So I think we are all in agreement that the key should be, I don't know, uh, implementation agnostic, but from yeah. the key, we want to extract some data that would indicate how it should be used by this extraction function to determine downstream uh, choices, right? Cool. Yeah, so make that concrete. If I, were, if I wanted to say the my partition criteria is actually the subject that's in the, in, the, um, in the event, I should be able to do so. So let's say I have an I have an event that events that are coming where the source is um, um, a device um, of sorts and that emits all kinds of telemetry and then the subject is temperature and then the other sub subject is whatever um, rotations per minute the other one is so different criteria that are happening and they're all on the subject I should then be able to go and have a function that um, then assigns those for two partitions so I. So that function um, might be knowledgeable of the of the numbers of numbers of partitions in my immediately in, in the Kafka implementation that's immediately in front of me. Let's say that has four. So the function is some kind of hash over the subject mod four. That's how I get the partition ID. Now I pull that stream out, and now I'm taking the same the same the same streams, like all the, all the data that comes out of that Kafka cluster. And I want to go and forward that now to a different Kafka cluster, but that has 16 partitions. So I should go and, and again, run a function that is some hash over the subject mod 16, and I get, the, and I get uh, a different, different kinds of partitions. That's, that's what I mean. Correct, correct. No, that's perfect. So now, where where should the responsibility of the knowledge of that particular, let's say, Kafka cluster should be? I mean, I think that's the point here, right? We, I yeah, think we are all agree. It must be. It must be in the forwarding client. It must be in the implementation that is that is interacting with that that is implementing this this uh, the transport binding. The the way how we thought about this, like as we are, have evolved these things, is that. As we get into these scenarios where we're actually forwarding all this data, um, and forwarding is something that is so the, the reason why why, why, why forwarding was a, was a point of discussion in uh, this whole time was that industrial scenarios, for instance, have this device the device emits telemetry and then the telemetry goes to you know, dozens of, of, of parties who might be interested in that information for all kinds of different reasons. So there's there are four there are those forwarding scenarios, and um, in those um, forwarding scenarios, we've we've talked about transcoding scenarios, etc. So we always assume that you're taking a cloud event off a transport, 
then the cloud event becomes, you know, goes back into its abstract form, and then it gets mapped down to a transport, um, and then um, you know goes through that if, through this, this leg of its route, and then you pull that off that transport, it goes back to, into its abstract form, and then you're choosing a different transport. So for here, effectively the 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 client, the cloud event Kafka client, that is connected to a concrete cluster will then know how many partitions exist and it will then go and calculate what the appropriate partition is um, for that cluster. And Correct. somewhere else on the route, another client may um, make a very different partition decision. And the company, and is, yeah, and, sorry. And is, one, one sentence. And that is why, and that is why the partition number, right, the, concrete partition hint cannot be in the message because the decisions on the route will be different. Correct. I completely agree with you. So I think, and maybe, uh, you know, when we talk in abstract, it's hard to, for, at least for me to uh, grab my head around it, but that, what you just said was perfect. So what, uh, what that meant to me was the forwarding client, let's say you had four Kafka clusters, but there's a config which at some point, which when the rubber hits the road needs to tell it, it has, uh, I don't know, four brokers, 12 brokers, 13 brokers, and this is the extraction function. And it knows how to take a generic key and map it to when it determines what that routing needs to be, it knows how to appropriately choose the hashing function and do it. So coming back to our original point, which in my understanding, I think we, we should not bring in the partition key attribute, but just keep it generic as key. Is that fair? I, I think this, I think what we need to do is we need to make a correction here and, and basically say the key attribute, we need to be, we need to make clear, and it's not clear here, that the key attribute really means what is the partition that we're sending to. So we need to reword, I, I believe we need to go and do a bug fix here, which is is the partition ID, the Kafka partition ID is determined through a partition key extractor function. Um, and we might also call this, we might also call this different. And um, which is independent of the uh, name of that in a generic message. Yes. So, so we need, we need to go, we need to do a bug fix here. I can, I can take this, I can take this as a, um, as a homework item to, um, uh, to propose a correction. So, so Clemens, I got a question for you because I'm not 100% sure I'm following this, but I, I think I understood what you just said there at the end, but it's not clear to me whether something actually appears in the message related no, to, uh, so, no. so nothing appears in the message relative to keys or partition keys or anything like that. Correct. And, th and that's, I think that's what the bug is. We, we, we're talking about a key attribute here still, but we actually talked ourselves out of it um, while we were discussing this whole thing. And then we, we, we left that in. But so does that mean that we should then propose to kill off this extension right here? No, no. The, the, the partitioning extension, that, that, what that gives you is it gives you a partition key. And the part partition key is if you need, if you can't, if you can't have a, if you can't derive from the message content itself, what partition that ought to belong to, Mm -hmm. You need to have some artificial criterion by which you can go and order that. So, so you might have you the, a partition key is effectively an art, artificial correlation key of some sort. So you're saying, you, you're saying this is almost it's, you're saying this is almost like a backup kind of a thing. Well, it's it's so if you if you can't determine only through source and um, and type and subject how you want to process that, because that, that's ultimately what, what partitioning does, right? Partitioning is, is slicing up your event stream in a way that the processor can deal with it, or mm -hmm. processors can deal with it, which means that the publisher may give hints in the form of a partition key for how those events shall be mapped to partitions. And the partition key might quite well be a totally artificial assignment that um, the application logic kind of gener generates in some way and how it groups events. And those groups, groups of events may be groups of, let's say maybe groups of devices. You have a thousand devices, which are all different, all different sources um, and sending different events, but you're grouping them together like a production lot. 
um, that all then emit the same partition key because you want to have them together. So that's what okay. that partition key, that is, that is what that partition key is generally for. And then that function that we're referring to here, the goal of the, the job of that function is to go and then look at either um, something that is in the metadata of the message or that partitioning, that partition key, and then effectively compute a partition ID out of it and computation made in the simplest case, the partition key may simply be a number from one to four, right? May simply go and take it and copy it and then go and set that as the partition ID for the Kafka client. Okay, I think it's starting to gel. Uh, Francesco, did you wanna say something? Your hands up. Yeah, so if I understood correctly from what you're saying, what you describe here is more a, a client and SDK behavior than something that I should put inside the event when I send event and when I receive the event. That's yeah, that's exactly right. Because okay. be this this is completely not clear from the uh, Yeah, that's so, exactly because because the way how those clients so Kafka on the the Kafka record itself, right? Doesn't even have that information. Can, and, 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 and neither does, neither, neither does here. Our, our event hub also doesn't have that information. Like the partition is something that, the partition information is something that is um, uh, outside of the event. And it's really only relevant for, for the senders and the receivers how they get the stuff out. But it becomes in, completely irrelevant once you are forwarding that event elsewhere. So it's simply, it's, it's really just a, a local function for a local, a local concern for that particular Kafka cluster. Okay, so okay. Can, can, can I can I just yes. ask a uh, last thing to you? Uh, so um, after after you uh, you work on re rewording this this paragraph, can you please uh, check the implementation that we did in the SDK Go, so yes. we can double check if this uh, how the spec maps to the actual implementation that we now have. Yeah, I, I will try my best to, um, I will look at the code <laughs> and then make sure that uh, whatever I write will uh, make the code be compliant. Yeah, yeah, I mean, if the code needs to be changed, it's fine for me, it's not a problem. Just, just try, I just want to be, to have this thing aligned. aligned so. Okay. So Kath, Kathy has a question. Yeah, okay, so I just want to make sure um, the key defined here maps to the key in the Kafka, which the producer can put into his message. And then the Kafka broker can, you know, use that key to map that message to a specific partition. Kafka does, yeah, the Kafka broker doesn't do that, the clients do. Okay. But because, because in Kafka, in Kafka in particular, the, since Kafka doesn't have a doesn't have a shared gateway, but is a is architecturally monolith, the the way how you find out the way how you talk to partitions is you connect effectively directly to the broker who owns the partition, which means you need to know ahead of time which partition you're selecting, and that's why the clients are actually doing that job. Okay, but the, but the but it can also use something else to map the message to the uh, yes. partition, right? And, and that is so, what the function is, right? That is, that is what is meant with that function. Ultimately, you need to get a, a number out, which you then can then uh, hand to the Kafka, F, uh, Kafka SDK. Oh, so this partition key structure is that function which does the yes. mapping. Yes, okay. because, because we may have the, the, the partition key, right, is a generic mechanism that exists in the, in the cloud events extension. There are other brokers outside of Kafka, which also have partitioning models. So, so the goal for that partition key mechanism is to be generic and then be usable by um, all the other, by the other brokers, which also need partitioning. So this is a particular implementation here and that should, and that should map to the partition ID. So we, we basically, we, we, we made a mistake by not cleaning this up when we, when we, um, um, uh, when we landed on the solution with that with that function, we didn't we just didn't do that right. 
Yeah, but I th just think this function name is a little bit confusing because it said it's a extractor, that means extract the key, but actually it's do the mapping too, right? Yeah. And also this function might do the mapping, you say, not, I mean, not, not based on the key, right? It could, yeah. it's, it, so, so it's maybe a, it's a, this it, name, because otherwise, you know, this name just means it track the key, it always also to recite key. But if yeah. it's a function, if it's a mapping from the message to a partition, specific partition, then, you know, it's, I mean, based on some other um, criteria, we shouldn't call it um, the key extractor, right? Uh, uh, well, uh, th that's right, and that should be a mapping function. I'll I'll try to dig up from the we we had several issues and and PRs about this. Um, I'll I'll go and mine the repo um, for the debates that we have had about this. I mean, we may may, may also have had those on the call, and uh, if we did, then um, that's going to be harder to find. But um, I'll try to dig that dig that up, and if I can find it, then I'll put it in, into the um, into the um, into the issue here or the PR, the, the PR here um, so, to reference. So, so Clemens, I'm just trying just trying to make sure I understand this because when I'm reading the text in here, it seems to me that <clears throat> excuse me that while the wording may not be exactly what we want, is is what's written here actually wrong or is it just a little misleading because the way I'm reading this is is that it says there's an extractor function that, that people will use to figure out what partition to put things into but um, if that either isn't there or you want some sort of default extractor function then we offer up this partition extension thing you could use but really it's the extractor function that's the main the, the main way of getting the partition key yes that's right Okay, so it's just a more, it's more of a wording thing more than anything else. Is that true? It's, it's a wording thing. I, I don't think we want to go and change the mechanism, but it's uh, it's really about um, uh, um, you know clarifying the mechanism. Okay, okay, just want to make sure we're on the same page. Okay, thank it's, you. It's it's not the key attribute; it's the partition ID that we want for Kafka specifically. It's also what's also weird is that that's not really using using Kafka nomenclature here. So we'll we'll go. And, I'll, I'll make a proposal to clean this up. I hope that the, 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 the wording change will be minimal. Okay. I think it's also good to clarify, yeah, this key is not the partition ID. It could be used by the mapping function to map to a partition ID or it might, it's all, it's all the, partition, the mapping function can use other attributes to map the message to, partition, to a partition, right? So if we can clarify, that would be, or we can just say this key map to the key in the um, this partition key um, map to the key of the Kafka. That maybe make it clear. Okay, does anybody have any questions or concerns about the direction it seems we're headed with this? I think um, uh, just the last comment uh, mm -hmm. uh, is the, 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 the whole point of a key and a partition key and everything is very Kafka specific, right? And it's, it's and I think uh, um, it was also mentioned, uh, I think by Cathy that, you know, everything else is extracting that using metadata in the message to extract the partition key. So it's something that is in the, in the client and the client function, right? There's, there is no key in the message. That is correct. There is no key. Yeah, well, there is no, there is, there is no partition ID in the message. There might be something that's usable as a key in the message. Right. The exactly. Attribute, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. The key attribute, the key attribute that is described here makes no sense in the message. Correct. Well, correct. Exactly. And I think I would like. To, I think we should just. My only point. My last point is. Thank you for this discussion. It's been extremely helpful. I think we should just mention that there is no key attribute in the message. The point is, it's it's symbolic, which is extracted from metadata in the message to facilitate downstream actions. But I, I, I'm going to rename. I'm going to rename that. I'm going to rename that section from three three one. I'm going to rename it into partition ID. And then clarify effectively the first the first sentence um, uh, will probably be two, and there I'm, I'm I'll be uh, talking about the relationship between the partition ID and um, the the and the message. The one thing that 
that, that isn't quite clear to me though is, as he was just saying, if there's nothing in the message, what does that mean for this extension? No, so there might be something in the message. If you really, if you want to have something in the message, if you, if you, if you, if you need to have an artificial key, right? Our official key to derive the the partition ID from then it's that. Okay. So it, okay, so it's not, there's not a must into something appear in the message, no. but there's a it's a may. Okay, and that's and that's why we that's why we have this as a as an extension because it's not applicable to all cases. But in case you have a partitioned log or or or, or queue or whatever, then you need to have a partition a partition uh, um, key of some sorts, and because that is not too uncommon, we made an extension out of it. But we have the repo. That's the rationale. The partition key extractor can ignore key if, if it wants to. Yes, but yeah. it, it, this what what doesn't make sense here is for for a a transport binding to add stuff into the message, like to add stuff into the event. That 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 is already I think that's already a foul. Right. Okay. Before we rat hole too much on this, but I think it was a good discussion. Any other questions or comments? All right, cool. So Clemens, I wrote you as taking the AI to provide some clarifying text on that. So thank you. You're welcome. More, more homework for me to uh, be late on. That's right. You can never have too much homework. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. That's technically the end of the agenda. Any other topics people want to bring up? Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Go, go ahead, Kathy. Sorry, this part stop finding. Is that Google specific or is it? A generic one? That is that is a Google specific binding and they are going to move that or they're going to change that pull request so that it's just a pointer to their binding that will be hosted on their website. Okay, got it. Okay, thank you. Yep. Oh, here we go. Wait a minute. Um, Christoph, are you there? Yeah, hi. And laugh better late than never. Gotcha. We're just about to end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just noticed the that I'd save time in the US. I missed yeah, that one, sorry. I, I suspect it hit a lot of people. Okay. Um, in that case, you guys, wait, I guess that's the end of the call unless somebody has anything else they want to bring up. Vlad, are you there? Yeah, I just joined. Yeah, unfortunately, daylight savings times bit you. So we're technically oh, over. I totally forgot that. Is I apologize. I probably should have sent that a note to remind people, but I completely, it completely slipped my mind. I'm sorry. Uh, this is a fail on my side. Don't worry yeah. about it. Okay, anyway, I think that's it for the day. Uh, unless I miss somebody for the agenda. Um, we'll talk again next week, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Sorry. Bye. Bye. Bye.